Hello guys, uh, we're going to have a, a practical session or tutorial. So I'm uh, separating or actually dividing the videos to multiple sessions so that uh, they wouldn't be much long. So for the first session that we have about chapter six or uh, for as a tutorial for chapter six, we have three questions. Uh, they will consume around 20 minutes or so so uh, they wouldn't be that much long for you to watch and uh, practice. So we have three questions here. The first one is about uh, creating um, a Python file that is given a name names and this type is .text, so it's a text file. So we need to write a program, a Python program that creates this file. And the program then sh should prompt the user to enter seven different names and store them uh, to this file. So these names could be of anything. So we, we don't actually care about uh, what kind of names. It could be cities, people, persons, or whatever, you know, maybe programming languages, classes, anything. So uh, initially we, we, we have to, uh, you know, create the file, then open it for, um, you know, writing, and then write data to it, and process it, close the file. So let's go ahead and uh, start writing it. Okay, so um, I'm sorry, let me start up my Python. Uh, you can use any interpreter you like. Um, I wouldn't just uh, request you to, you know, use a specific one for the time being at least. So I'm just using the Python shell, the elementary one for just, uh, you know, provided by Python itself. Okay, so what's requested from us is just creating a program, uh, or writing a program that creates a file. So this program creates a text file and writes seven names to it. Okay, so um, I would like to go ahead and use uh, functions. You may ask me, it's not necessary. This is not necessary. It's not necessary. There is nothing mentioned in, in the question about using um, methods or, sorry, functions for solving this program. However, I prefer to go for this kind of theme. Uh, you would find it later on, once you become professional in uh, Python, that this is a better way to go for programming with Python. Okay, so um, we are creating a file from scratch. So the file doesn't exist actually. We need to create it, save seven uh, lines in it. So the first thing comes to our mind is to create the out file object. And why out file in this case? Because our file actually is meant to store data, to receive data to be stored to it. So open, we would use the function open, and here we have to provide uh, two arguments. I'm sorry, two arguments here. I'm very sorry. Two arguments. So these two arguments will be the name of the file. The name of the file is called names. It's given to us in the question. This file doesn't exist. We are creating it from the scratch. Okay, so. Uh, how will we create a file from scratch? So we have to open it for writing. There is no such a file to be created. Then we can place data to it or store data to it. Okay, so this file will be opened and the reference of this file will be assigned or uh, placed given to add file with this variable. So we can use this variable um, uh, as a reference to uh, you can say apply some functions for writing. Okay, so we have our object for the out file. Now, in order for us to write some lines, we can use either a loop to write, let's say, seven lines or repeat the process seven times. I wouldn't go for repeating the process seven times. So what I'm going to do, I'll just create a loop. We can use a simple way for loop in such range like this, range uh, seven. 
So as you know, that um, when we apply this range, it goes from 0 to 6 inclusive. That means uh, we have seven, uh, you can say, uh, iterations in this loop. So what are, what are we going to do? We need to prompt the user to enter these lines. OK, so let's say I give a name here, name, as a string for my input or for my entry. And I tell the user input, enter, let's say, I'm sorry, enter a name to be stored. Enter a name. And I enter a name. To store in a to the file. Okay. So, well, we keep it simple this way. Now, uh, we are inside the loop, so this will be repeated seven times. So we received uh, the name. So what we are going to do? We will store it to this file. So at file dot write. And what we are going to write the name. But I would like not to keep all names in the same line. So I don't want to be to write them on the same line. I would just add, uh, you know, one escape sequence or one escape, you can say, line or a new line after each name. So we are writing this line, whatever name we are giving. And then we skip one line and go to the next. OK. So this will do, this will write these names uh, to the file. Then once it is done, we just close down the, um, uh, I'm sorry, it's not inside the loop. We have to exit the loop because this will be repeated seven times. Once we are done, we exit the loop, then we must close the file. Uh, I, I repeatedly received this question, why do we need to close this file? Or why, why should we close the file? What will happen? If you do not close the file, most probably you will end up having a problem. Your data that you are going to write to the file will not be properly transferred to the file if you don't close it. It will remain in the in buffer, and that's the temporary memory, until you finish all your process and then give the instruction that we are done with this file, so close it. So this is the idea. OK, I get out of the main, and then I call the main. And this will do. So we have a loop that repeats seven times. And each time we receive a name, we ask the user, we prompt the user to enter this name. We write this name into the file. We add one, uh, you can say, uh, escape character or one jump or a jump to a new line each time. And then once we are done with this loop, we close the file. So we open the file, process, close. So this is the idea. Let's just uh, save and run. OK. So let me save it. Uh, OK, I'll give it this name, chapter 6, um, OK, example 1, 2020. OK, so we are prompt to enter uh, a name. OK, let's just uh, provide, you know, programming languages, just simple, you know, names of programming languages, C, C++, C Sharp. Let's say uh, Java, Python. Uh, let's take another family, HTML. Let's take a similar family, PHP. And these are seven. Well, it seems to me the program run. But how do we know? So let's just have a look here. There is a note. Make sure to observe where the open file has been stored. So where this file has been stored, Actually, the, the question is telling us, observe it. So you go where you have your main Python directory. And it, it, def it depends on where you actually placed your Python directory. If you just left it default, you'll find it in programs somewhere in your maybe C. So you know your system. Make sure where you store this one. If you are not quite sure, you can go to Python shell or from here, file. You can just go to open. OK, and you'll find it. You can just copy whole directory here if you're not quite sure where this one is. So this is my main directory. Uh, I will find something like this, names. Uh, you may find it in different formats. This is coming by default like uh, Visual Studio. It doesn't matter. We can change it. To me, it doesn't actually disturb me this way. 
uh, I'll open it by text file as a text file. Look at this. So we have all these, uh, you can say, um, names stored, and there is a jump sequence after each and every one of them, including the last one. So we have one empty line at the end here. It doesn't matter. There's just an, an empty line. It will just jump to a new line after each of those. So I have a file with these seven names. Okay, that's good enough for this uh, program. So uh, let me close this one and see the next uh, the next question is asking us, assume that a file containing a series of integers is named numbers.txt and exists on the computer's disk. Write a, a program that displays all the numbers in the file. So we have a file. We assume that we have a file. So this assumption is supposed to be valid. So numbers.txt and it exists on our computer's disk. For simplicity, I have already created this one in my Python is main directory, so just for simplicity, because we will have other types of questions in next session. So I can open this one and show you the type of uh, numbers that I have, just random integer numbers I stored in it. Okay, So these are just random integer numbers that we uh, have, you, you can say, saved into the file. You can create it manually. You don't have to run any program, or you can create a program to write these uh, numbers into the file. And later on, we will see how to write integers into the file. So for the time being, let's just stick to the question and see what we are supposed to do. So I have this one. So the question is asking us to display all the contents, all the numbers uh, written into the file. OK, so let's just uh, go ahead and create a new file. So let's just uh, write this simple comment that we usually do this program. Uh, opens a file for reading another comment and it displays its numerical contents. So I know that the file has numerical contents or integer numbers. It doesn't matter the time being. Okay, so let's just go ahead and create a main method. As I said, a main function, sorry. As I said, this is uh, a matter of, you can say, preference. Now, I have a file. This file uh, does exist on our uh, computer system. So we just open it for reading. And we need to display all its contents. OK. So in order for us to do so, we need to open the file for reading. And I will call it in file. In file, why? Because I already have a file that has contents that I can read. So I will have an input data from a file, which is already available. I will have it and display it to the screen. So we will use, again, open function. And we have two uh, different, you can say, um, arguments. So the first argument here will be the name of the file, complete name of the file. We call numbers dot text. This is the complete, the full name with extension, and we are opening it for reading. Remember that if this file doesn't exist, then uh, there will be an exception raised. We will discuss exception in the third session of the practical not now. All right, so now once this one is done, I open the file for reading, I can process the file. So now there are different ways. There are, uh, you can say, a number of ways to read the lines from the uh, file. But there is, a, you can say, an abbreviated way to display all the contents of the file. Let's say I just give a name to a string, content equal, I'm sorry, equal. So here we have equal to. Um, now we have in file the object, the file object, and we can use a read as a whole, the entire file. So we have the method read that we can use it with the object file in file to read the entire contents of the file as a string. So the question didn't specify that I have to display the contents as integers. The question is asking us just display them. So we are just displaying them. So I can read all of them at once and then just display all the content. So you may tell me the content that I just got from the file. It could be like uh, maybe 100 lines. It doesn't matter. It would be just a string. So I'll display it directly here. 
So as we did earlier, we open the file for some specific reason here, reading, we process, so this is called processing, and then remember to close the file, sorry, in, in file, dot close, so that your object uh, file is terminated and uh, closed, so, so we know that we are done with this file and the, uh, you can say the task of processing will be realized. Call the main so that you can realize your, uh, you know, uh, function. You can call the function so that you can execute it. Let's uh, save and run. Okay, uh, I'll save it with a very similar name, example two. Actually, I, ju I just use this rhythm. It doesn't matter, you can give whatever name you, you, pro you like. Okay, there is a problem. That means I missed something and file is not defined. Uh, yeah, I made a mistake typo. This happens in file, in file. It's telling me this one in flying, in file. Okay, in file. Sorry, in file. Okay, uh, how did I do that mistake? I'm not sure. Okay, in file, so just correct it. This normally happens, so do not bother yourself much. So you see. Uh, we have all these numbers. So these are the content of the file I just uh, opened for you. Well, we just read them by only one statement read. So the idea is like this statement allows you to read the entire file at once. Okay, this is good enough. Let's not extend. Let's go to the next one. The next question is telling us write a program that asks the user for the name of a file. So we have to provide the name of a file. We can use this file. We, we just created it. So let's use it. The program should display only the first five lines. Okay, so the question is about displaying first five lines. How about if it has less than five lines? So it's telling us if the file contains less than five lines, then it should display the entire contents of the file. Okay, good. So there are two possibilities. Either the file has more than five lines. In this case, actually, the file has more than five lines, but we are not sure. We can generalize the case. Um, so it has more than that, so we just need to display the first five lines. If not, just display the entire thing. So we have to make some conditions to read the, um, you can say, data from the file. Let's create a new uh, file here. Let me just uh, write, uh, you know, some comment. This program opens a file and reads the first five lines or its entire contents if less than five if it's if it's if its contents yeah if its contents if it is sorry if it is less than No, <laughs> this sounds funny to me, I'm sorry. So uh, entire, or its entire contents, if it includes less than five lines. Okay, this sounds a bit better. All right, uh, just uh, for the record, this is, um, you know, a uh, comment. Uh, just uh, an ex explanatory, you can say, statements about the program itself, but it's a good habit for a programmer to write some comments so that readers know what he or she is doing. Okay, let's go for the uh, main function. And as I said, this is optional. You could just skip the whole function thing. I suggest that you stick to it. All right, so uh, we create the main. Now, remember that we have the file on our uh, disk. So, um, like, let's say I said, let's use this names because we already have it. So, its full name is names.text. We can prompt the user and tell him, enter the, or her, tell the, sorry, enter the entire, you can say, file name or the complete file name or the full file name with the extension. 
All right, so uh, I can just use name. Okay, it's just a string, and I, I prompt the user to enter input. Okay, enter before file name. Okay, so we assume that the user will enter. Uh, this file name with the extension. In some cases, users may not be aware of the file extension. We will have some application later on for it. Let's not extend the this session. We will have some application to attach the uh, extension to a file when the user just enters the file's name without extension. Okay, so we will assume that the user will enter the name of the file with its extension. So we open the file. I'm sorry, let's have this is uh, in file because we are going to read data from it. So we will just open the file for reading. So we have the two strings. The first one is name. We got it, the full string from the user. So um, I'm sorry, sorry, okay, uh, name. And then we are opening it for uh, reading, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry because the Turkish keyboard sometimes confuses me. I'm using both languages, so uh, it's really confusing for those who are using, uh, you know, switch between languages. That's why I keep sometimes making these mistakes, especially with quotations and, you know, the commas and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, we have already uh, opened the file for reading. So we created the object file object for uh, reading the reference. So now we can read the lines. But before that, we need to read five first five lines or the entire file if it is less than five lines. So initially, let me just read one line. So this will allow me to read one line. So in file dot read line. Earlier, we just used, uh, we used, sorry, read. That will allow you to read the entire file or will provide the entire content or the contents of the file to you. We are not interested in that. We are just interested in one line. So it would read one line at a time, move the pointer to the next line. So we will have like a pointer, or you can say um, a, a locator that moves one line at a time. Whenever you read a line, this is automatically done. You don't interfere with it, okay? So we, we have read one line, but I don't like to keep it this way. I, I would like to strip the backslash n that we provided earlier. Do, re, do you remember we provided the backslash n? So the same line that I just created, uh, I will just say it equals to line itself, but I will strip the right side uh, backslash n or the escape sequence from the right side or the rear side of the string. Okay. So now I'm not done yet. Why? Because this would just read the first line. Okay, we're not quite sure how many lines that we have. How about I create a loop while, and I will say as long as line is not equal to, uh, it's not equal, sorry, it's not equal to null, okay, or, so now I have to create, um, I have to create a counter. I read one line, I would create a count for myself to do what? To count the, um, you know, to count the, uh, you can say red lines. So we we have read one line, so we increment the counter by one, or we initialize the counter to one. Then if we read another line, we need to increment this counter. So if, or the counter, sorry, count, as long as it is less than five, keep on looping, keep iterating. So as long as the line is not simple, uh, is not actually providing or is not symbolizing the end of file, this is now just the, uh, you can say the uh, sign of the end of file, or count is, is still less than five lines, so then keep on iterating. So what do we do? So what's requested is just displaying the line, right? So we print this line. Okay, and then we are not done yet. Okay, I just got this line outside of the loop. How about we need to update the, the line? We need to read it again each time so that we can iterate. Okay, so I do the same process. I don't have to write it, to type it again all over. I can just copy these two lines, just repeat them so that we save some time. 
Okay, I have to maintain the scope. Make sure that you maintain the same indentation here. So line equals in file dot read line. So I read another line. See, I read one one here. So inside the loop, I have to repeat the process. Then it will iterate by itself over and over again. So this line, I strip the uh, backslash n provided to it earlier. Then I increment my counter. I can use the augmented. You can say assignment statement to increment it. And I will just exit the loop. Once I'm done with my, you can say, um, you know, file processing. So this is file processing. All these are considered within the file processing. I close the file. So in file, in file.close, I hope I don't have any typo. Okay. So main, and I call my main function. So you need to call the main function out of the scope of the main. So you exit the scope of the main and then call it. So let's just save and uh, run. Uh, let me give it the name of example three. We just uh, discussed it from the Word document. All right, so we enter the name of the file. Make sure that we put the or we provide the full name, names.txt, and make sure that if it is capital, lowercase or uppercase, provide exactly the same way. Okay, look, so names.txt will bring us all the contents here while stripping the backslash n. Let me do this before I end the session. Uh, let me show you this one. If I change this uh, process, I'm sorry. Let's say I don't strip this one. Uh, let me just comment this one out and comment this one out. So I'm, I'm just changing these two in instructions or statements to comments so they will not run. Now let's have a look how the program will run. Okay, let's just repeat the process, names.txt. Now look, it will display the contents true with no problem, but it will provide us with the escape sequence after each one, and this is not nice. So since it is artificially added, it's not actually within the contents because we would like to jump uh, when we store data to the file to a new line each time, when you retrieve this data, the new line will be also presented unless you strip it yourself. So that's why we keep uh, this process like this. We strip the, uh, you can say, right side, um, you know, backslash n or the escape sequence. And in this case, it will allow you to present exactly what's available in, in your file without any escape sequence. I hope you guys will benefit from these uh, examples and I will create another uh, tutorial session soon enough. So until then, have a good time and I hope you enjoy this uh, session. Goodbye.